Welcome back to Fry Minis. I'm Eric, and today in our Fizzbands Treasury of Dragons coverage, we're going to take a look at a new player character option, Draconic Gifts. So if you haven't already, please, of course, like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know what you're thinking about this book. Join us over on Discord at discord.gg slash fryminis. We want to hear from you, and that is the truth. We actually do. I like talking to people. That's why we're, one of the reasons we're here. So we're putting all these videos in one big monster uh, fizz bands playlist. I've got a link in the description. Check that out so you can see all our cool uh, fizz band coverage. So draconic gifts are kind of like magic items, kind of like feats. Uh, they're kind of like boons. They're special abilities that your character can get. Uh, whether it's from killing a dragon or doing a quest for a dragon or an praying to a dragon god or whatever they however you want to get them is whatever makes sense for your game uh, but they're cool abilities that your character can have that are dragonish the death of a dragon can result in its power taking root in a character whether that person is the dragon's chosen heir or the dragon's killer the result of this investiture can vary widely in power and impact from a minor charm to a complete transformation Sometimes a draconic gift has an obvious visual manifestation, such as when a character is transformed into a dragonborn. Other gifts are invisible, but no less potent. But on some worlds, the investiture of draconic power is accompanied by some kind of physical manifestation, especially if it's derived from slaying a dragon. It might be small and easily hidden, but those who know to look can usually identify a dragon slayer or another character who carries a draconic gift by a telltale sign. The Draconic Marks table suggests some possibilities of what those marks might look like. Draconic Marks table is a D4 table. One or both of the character's eyes change color to resemble the dragon's eyes or scales. The character's hair, or a streak of it, changes color to match the color of the dragon's scales. A mark, like a stylized dragon eye or claw, appears on the body. Patches of scales appear on the character's body, typically on the neck, shoulders, or forearms. Yeah, so it's setting it up. These are special things. You you won't easily come across these. These are these are perks. These are real rewards uh, from one way or the other. So much so that they can mess with your body. The draconic gifts detailed in this section have rarities like magic items. The rarity of a draconic gift corresponds roughly to the age category of the dragon that bestowed it as shown in the draconic gift rarity table. You can use a more common draconic gift for an older dragon, but exercise caution going in the other direction. Very rare and legendary draconic gifts can unbalance the game if they're given to low level characters. Draconic gift rarities are rarity versus age category. Uncommon for wormlings, rare for young, very rare for adults, and legendary for ancient. Okay, totally, totally makes sense. The stronger the dragon, the stronger the gift, the stronger the reward for slaying it or helping it or, or again, whatever. Okay, so now we're going to actually take a look at some of the specific gifts here and they look really cool. Draconic Familiar, Uncommon. You gain the aid of a Draconic Familiar, which might be a splinter of the consciousness of a dragon that invested you with power. You can cast the Find Familiar spell as a ritual without using any material components. When you cast the spell in this way, your familiar always takes the form of a pseudo-dragon. Additionally, when you take the attack action on your turn, you can forego one of your own attacks to allow your pseudo-dragon familiar to make one attack of its own with its reaction. Hey, uh, Pact of the Chain Warlock, what's up? <laughs> All we need to do is kill a dragon and we get your entire subclass. That's cool. I, <laughs> all right. I really like Find Familiar. I think, I mean, I think most people do, uh, but I really enjoy it. I like giving it to players that, or to characters that can't normally get it. Uh, it gives just such a, such a heart to their story that it's good to get more options. Draconic Rebirth, Uncommon. You become a Dragonborn. You replace the racial traits of your original race with the traits of a chromatic gem or metallic dragonborn. The kind of dragonborn you become matches the family of the dragon that is the source of this gift. You can keep any skill proficiencies you gain from your previous race or gain proficiency in two skills of your choice. So 
you didn't know it, but this book contains a lineage. I mean, just like uh, like the, the Reborn or the Dampier, uh, this straight up lineage, you are transformed and your race is replaced with this. I don't know why this isn't called a lineage, but I mean, that's what it is. It's super cool. I, I am not a lore master, but I believe at some version of Dragonborn, they were, they were transformed or changed or something like that. So assuming that's right. And let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, which I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, I think that's a nice little throwback if that's accurate. Either way, it's still fun. Draconic senses, rare. You gain keen senses like a dragon's. Blind sight. You have blind sight to a range of 10 feet. Within that range, you can effectively see anything that isn't behind total cover, even if you're blinded or in darkness. Moreover, you can see invisible creatures within that range unless the creature successfully hides from you. Keen senses. You have advantage on wisdom perception checks. 10 feet of blind sight can be really, really great. I mean, you've got a, um, a fighting style that gives it to you. The teaser, the new uh, monk subclass in this book gives you blind sight. Uh, rogue gives you blind sight. Um, I think if you get a, a snake familiar, I think that can get blind sight. Uh, blind sight can be pretty powerful. And of course, you know, perception checks advantage that's plus five to your passive. So very, very good, very nice. Echo of Dragon Sight, very rare. You have begun to extend your awareness beyond the single world of the material plane that is your home. You can cast Contact Other Plane as a ritual. The entity you contact is a dragon on another world in the material plane, so its knowledge of your world might be limited. Also, this dragon is an echo of the dragon who is the source of the gift, which might affect its attitude and behavior toward you. I love a reward that has some story flavor to it. If you killed this dragon to get this ability, that dragon might not super want to help you. And maybe that dragon will find a way to come get you. I don't know if that's possible, but it would be in my game. Uh, contact other plane. You can do a lot of cool stuff with that. Uh, I feel like most games, though, that's either going to be super helpful or super not. So I think that one's pretty wishy-washy but it can be really cool frightful presence very rare echoes of a dragon's might linger around you and you can call on them to inspire fear in those who stand against you as a bonus action you can manifest your frightful presence each creature of your choice that is within 120 feet of you and aware of you must make a wisdom saving throw against a dc equal to eight plus your proficiency bonus plus your charisma modifier a creature that fails becomes frightened of you for one minute the creature can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on itself on a successful save. Once you use this ability a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. Straight up, we are snagging abilities and features and traits from dragons and giving them to players, and I love it. Rightful Presence is can be super cool. Um, it all depends. You know, a lot of things are immune to fear. But the frightened condition can be really great in the right situation. So it, it's interesting that it's it kept it with charisma. I, I thought that with how everything else so far in this book has been, uh, you choose if it's charisma, intelligence, or wisdom. I thought maybe we would do that here to give it a little bit of versatility. But I'm, I'm glad it stuck with charisma. I think that was the right call. Psionic reach, very rare. The psionic energy of a gem dragon empowers your mind. You gain resistance to psychic damage. In addition, you learn the telekinesis spell. You can cast this spell without expending a spell slot. Once you cast the spell in this way, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest. You can also cast the spell using spell slots you have of the appropriate level. The spell casting ability is intelligence, wisdom, or charisma when you cast the spell with this gift. Choose when you gain this gift. So to jump back to Frightful Presence, that's the the flexibility of the stat I meant, but no big deal. Gaining resistance is always good. Psychic, uh, a lot of times it's going to be really important or really not important, depending on the kind of tone of the campaign. So that's fine. And telekinesis can be a great spell. You have to be a little creative with its use, uh, but it, you can do some, some wild, wild hijinks with it. Scaled toughness, legendary. Your skin toughens, making you resistant to certain types of physical harm. 
you gain resistance to piercing and slashing damage. All right, that's legendary. That deserves that legendary tag. You are going to have to do something just absurd to be able to get this, but you get an absurd reward for doing it. Resistance to slashing and piercing damage. Not just uh, non-magical versions, it's, it's all of it. Uh, so permanent partial rage. This is great. I will say though, this makes me almost wish there were scaled, uh, like like uh, leveling up versions, not scaled like dragon scales, uh, versions of these because I would love to see a uh, like a rare version maybe that almost works like the heavy armor master feat where it's like minus three damage to each of those. Uh, I think that could be an interesting uh, homebrew there that uh, maybe maybe we'll put that together. And Tongue of the Dragon Uncommon. You gain some of the majestic presence of a dragon. Dragon's speech. You can speak, read, and write draconic. Dragon's voice. As a bonus action, you can make your voice audible up to 300 feet away for one minute. And Dragon's wiles. You have advantage on charisma persuasion checks. All right. Gaining language is cool. Uh, Built-in thaumaturgy. That's nice. But advantage on all persuasion checks. Uh, that that's pretty intense that's good uh to put that on a bard or something that could be dangerous and we also have a section on uh reflavoring existing feats as draconic gifts if you want to expand your options if your campaign uses the optional feat rules from the player's handbook your dungeon master might give you a feat as a variant draconic gift you gain one feat of your or the dm's choice which is related in some way to the draconic power you've acquired consider these examples your heightened sense gives you a dragon's awareness of your surroundings, the alert feat or observant feat. Uh, dragon's blood has made you hardy and resilient, durable, resilient, or tough. Exposure to the primal energy of a dragon's body has given you a magical affinity for one damage type, elemental adept. You are infused with a dragon's charismatic gift for inspiration, inspiring leader. You are imbued with a dragon's intellect, keen mind. The dragon's gift lingers in the form of good luck, lucky. The dragon's inherent magic has transferred to your own blood, magic initiate. At the DM's discretion, you might also be able to gain one of the draconic feats instead. These are really great options. Uh, I, I like the reflavoring feat that kind of gets us into that scaling ability that I, I had just mentioned. Uh, so, so I think that's good there, but that's still uh, an opportunity for somebody to homebrew that together. Throw it on the DM's guild and send me a link. Rewarding players for really cool gameplay objectives and role play behaviors uh, can go a long way to make your game more memorable. So these kind of rewards that you're not gonna normally get just from killing the dragon. Uh, if, if I'm the dungeon master, it's going to be a, a big epic quest to kill this dragon that can give you this kind of reward uh, just for slaying it. Now, if you want to meet a dragon and, and go somewhere from there to earn this rather than just murder it for it, that's that's totally a different story. And I, I, I'm so excited. These are great. I absolutely love them. Uh, this book is shaping up to be fantastic. So uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, join us over on Discord at discord.gg slash fryminis. If you want to support the channel, check us out over at patreon.com slash fryminis. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for more videos and we'll see you in the next one.